Hi again, this is Shanna with Shanna's Wire Wrap Jewelry. Today we're going to be making some Cascade Swirl Ear Cuffs. If you don't have any piercings or you only have one piercing on your lobe and you would like to add a little bit more bling, this is the perfect way to do that. They are super cute and add a lot of style. We're going to be making a pair. So we're going to be making a set and they need to mirror each other. So let's go ahead and get started. The tools we need to make these cascade swirl ear cuffs are our standard jewelry making tools. We have our wire cutters, needle nose pliers, chain nose pliers, our mini mandrel, hammer, ruler, and a steel block. To make a pair of these, we need two pieces of wire that are five and a quarter inches long. If you could take a minute, I would like you to make this template before you move on. It'll make things a little bit more easy. So two pieces, five and a quarter inches long. Then make your next measurement on your template here at two and a half inches. That's where we're going to be making a bend and it makes it much easy to remember, especially if you label your paper. And the last one we need is at three centimeters. And then on this, I actually need a second measurement, about right there, just prior to three centimeters. And I'll walk you through this and you'll understand where we're going with it. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Clear my area here, and we're going to use we're going to use this silver plated wire, and we need two five and a quarter pieces, and I want to flush cut every end. Let's start by flush cutting this end, just so there's no sharp ends on that, and. We'll cut two the same length. If you're on an assembly line and you would like to make a lot of these, then you can cut 20 pieces and then just go from there. Let's start with two. We'll perfect this first and then you can move on to doing your assembly line. What I'm doing here is straightening out this wire. Instead of trying to pull it straight, which really isn't as reliable, I always use my rubber mallet and my steel block and I turn with these fingers. I'm turning the wire as I'm hammering. This rubber mallet is not going to damage your wire. And that actually does a really good job of straightening the wire out. So I'm turning as I'm hammering turning slowly and hammering. And now we have two really great straight pieces of wire. It looks really good, gives us a great start. Okay, so for our first measurement, we have our five and a quarter inch pieces of wire, and I want you to take the skinniest end of your needle nose pliers and hold on to it at two and a half inches. Just right at the end, and then I want you to bend that short piece over. That's it. So that's step number one. Let's do the other one exactly the same. Okay. Now I want you to flip this where your long piece is on top and your short piece is on the bottom. I want you to get your needle nose pliers again at the smallest point possible, just right at the tip there, because we want this turn to be small. See that second little notch I brought over from three centimeters? I want you to hold the wire at the curve at one end and then hold the tip at that little tick mark right there. And we want to bend the long piece the opposite direction. After we've done that, I want you to use the thickest part of your needle nose pliers. Actually, play around with that because some needle nose pliers have a, a different gradient to it. They might be much bigger. But we want, 
we want that to curve around this part and come straight back this way. So I'll illustrate. So if I hold it just past this curve, then when I turn it in, you'll notice I'm not bending the tool around the wire, I'm bending the wire around the tool. Does that make sense? And I'll show you something. This is what we'll end up with, a shape that looks like this. Almost looks like a paper clip. Let's do the same thing to this other piece and then we'll move forward. Okay, you're gonna hold it where the longer piece is on top. You're gonna get your needle nose pliers in between the two pieces and hold it at that second little mark in. It's very close. You want, you want the two ends of those to be close together here, but they can't be exactly the same length or they'll overlap one another. So let's hold it here and right at that second little mark, and let's turn our wire all the way in. If you feel like that curve ended up a little bit too big, you can use your needle, your um, chain nose pliers to cinch that together a little bit. And then you want to use a thicker part of your needle nose pliers just past. It's not lined up perfectly. It comes out just past that curve. And then I want you to turn that wire around the tool and make it parallel. All right, we don't need our template any longer. We have these two pieces that are basically identical. And from there, we're gonna start making our curves. The first one we're gonna do is this little tiny one. So if we're holding our wire like this, that little tiny piece of wire is gonna curve around and make that curve. So again, take the tip of your needle nose pliers. We want the beginning of that little swirl to be small. And then curl it around. Okay. And then I flip this over. This longer piece, I want it to swirl around. Let's look at this. See how this wire is curved around that little initial swirl? So we're going to take this and turn it. I'm using my thumbnail to assist me as I kind of pull this around, but even if you just held on to the swirl that you made and pulled that wire back this direction, you should be able to achieve that look. So you want it to come back at this angle before you start working your swirl back. And you want that other swirl to end up directly below your first one. That looks really good to me. Both of your swirls should line up a third of the way over. You don't want them to be in the center, you want them to be just a third over. And then the other two thirds over here. Okay, we're gonna do this one more time. Let's take our other piece, get the tiniest part of our tool. looks pretty good. It's about a third of the way over. I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to use my nail and kind of pull this over and get this over to this kind of an angle. And then I want to use my needle nose pliers again and do a swirl. 
You might have to shape the wire just a little bit. I want that swirl to be just underneath your first one. Now you should have two pieces that look identical. But we're making a pair and so we need to flip flop them. So let's mirror this here. Okay, now what I need you to do is put them on your steel block and I think I left out this tool earlier. You are going to need a regular hammer because it's not absolutely necessary but I do like to have these curves hammered and I'm going to show you the difference of what it looks like with or without. So I'm going to gently start hammering these curves. These need to be laid out in a mirror, otherwise you might hammer the wrong side. Okay. Now look at that. The curves are kind of flattened out and they kind of reflect the light, which is what I love to see in the jewelry. And then all you do now is keep them laid out separately or you might wrap them on the mandrel wrong. So I start with one and I put my curves on the center and I hold it on the mandrel and I wrap it around. Take your, taking your rubber, rubber mallet and shaping it gently around the tool. This one got a little bit deformed on there. We may need to turn it around and rework it back the right direction. This looks really good to me. It's nice and round. It can be opened a little bit to put it on and squeezed closed. Okay, I didn't flip this. When we hammered it this way, that ends up being the top, okay? So I'm gonna place those swirls right where I can hold them easily and then I'll finger wrap this around a little and then hammer away with my rubber mallet. You may end up having to do a little bit of adjusting once you're done but you should end up with two pieces that are mirrored, okay? If you look here, our swirls are on this third of our loop, our little cuff, and one will be for one ear, and you'll want to place it on the lobe where the swirls, this one is specifically for a right ear, and this one is specifically for the left ear the part of the cuff that is closest to your design goes inside the ear. And I can illustrate that again in a moment. But that's all you do. So this particular pair that we made, we hammered and it has that beautiful reflective look. This other one that I made is just swirls with no hammering. And you may have a preference of one over the other but that gives you an option when you have the hammered it gives a little bit more of a professional look in my opinion and it strengthens the wire and gives that reflective look that we love you can make these in any color and you can even dangle little beads off the bottom because this part of the swirl should hang right on the lobe where you normally would wear an earring on the lobe so you can dangle 
beads or something from the bottom of each of these to make a cuff with an earring and something that dangles. Your creativity can just go crazy. So I hope you have a lot of fun making these. And please let me know in the comments below if you liked the video. And please let me know what you would love to learn in the future. If you subscribe, you will automatically be notified when we have new videos available. So I will see you next time.